So everyone, I think uh, anyone of you actually practice it, whatever we have covered so far. Yes. Uh, yes, Sumrita, we uh, tried. So any problem is there? Uh, not much. Uh, the your documentations, what you have said yesterday, uh, that was very helpful. We are following that documents. Okay. Apart from that, I think you also need to read those uh, paragraphs also because these are the informations how uh, actually these coding and other things actually working. Okay. So it's not about copy the code and then run it to your end. Sometimes it requires because whatever I am telling in this call, the same thing I have written over the documents also. Yes. So if I ask you a couple of questions, what are the structural directives we have in Angular? Can you, anyone can tell? Yes, Subhata. Yes, please. Uh, ng model and uh, ng if ng switch. So there are something like the active. Ng model is not a structural directive. Uh, ng style, ng if. Ng, NG. NG. In NG for our NG style NG switch. model NG model we are using just for two-way bindings. Okay. okay. NG if and NG for yes. As per your previous These two are both. We have a, a three structural directory that NG if NG for off and NG switch. Right, Shubhrata? Yes. Ng for ng switch and ng if these are three structural directives. Suppose I am giving you a scenario. Suppose uh, a UI developer giving you HTML and CSS, mm -hmm. and you started incorporating those in your Angular application. Okay, and suddenly you find a problem that uh, certain things we cannot take in the global level. That means in main style.css file. Okay. So you take those uh, relative informations and put in the component level style.css. Okay. Now what happens? Someone from the UI team actually uh, enter into your style.css file and then adding the same CSS in the style.css file. So that CSS you are you are having in the style.css, the same class you are having in the component file, component.css file. Okay. In that scenario, how you handle with this problem? Yeah, I think uh, the inner part means the component, if there is same selector uh, in the global style or CSS and the component based style or CSS, then the uh, component based style or CSS selector is overwrite uh, the global style or CSS, if there is same in, in Yes, that is correct. So just, just to remember, that if you if anything put, put put in your project or in your application twice, your component level CSS generally overwrite your style dot Sometimes it happens that you the UI person write CSS in the style dot file, and certain things are not working at the component level. You can take that CSS into component level and also put important notation before the CSS that you are overriding. It will resolve the problem. Okay. So hello, Surita. Sunil is side. That means in that case, we need to keep both, or just can it component? We can define only in the component CSS. So. It is always wise, okay. But what happened in real life scenario? UI developers generally don't enter into that component level. 
they generally every time they handle css and css seven stops in the style.css file okay so okay. sometimes what happen you need to fix those things so you can take those things from the again style.css and put it into the component level and it should work okay. you, you, you don't need any ui person again okay okay so let me uh, let me start my sharing screen and then we will talk so yesterday we have actually plotted our ng model and then we run through Brother, sorry, I just uh, accidentally mute uh, yourself. So, can you please re unmute yourself, please? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, am I audible? Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Yes. Okay. okay. No. So, so, the thing is that there is a core model available. We are handling this core model to our mock file. And then we are collecting our data from the mock file, and we have read, written our code into our main using that mock DSP. file that is there. Okay. Today, what we are going to do, we will add a click event into against the each row. Okay. So I am going to. And I'm going to put it over here. Okay. The will automatically throw an error because I have given a function that function is not there in my component file. So I have to write one function over there. Uh, double dot over there. After bracket. Double quote. It's missing. Thank you. <clears throat> now you can see that we are passing this zero, that we are getting it in the loop zero, and we are passing this zero information into that select event okay so this hero information should be there into this function i'm taking this function and putting here now this function what they are doing they have collected this information from the view page they are taking it as an argument and this argument is validating with our model so this is the speciality of typescript in typescript whatever we are using whether it's a string whether it's a number okay whether it's an object here it is an object the variable hero is type of hero okay and this function is void returning void so there is a variable over there we have to take this variable <clears throat> so it is giving still giving me okay it is running fine right now so if i go into my application i will be able to see things okay so what is right now i am doing so i have created one function i am writing the function in my ts file i am passing my hero data in the function then i am 
putting this zero value to this particular variable selected zero so now we need to plot this variable and update our html okay so earlier we are using if i go into there we are using hero dot name and hero dot something right now we do not have hero okay because on select event is taking selected hero variable so we need to update that information is not required right now is also not required okay so i made a mistake my this and now i have to remove this one still giving me zero dot id and zero dot selected here on it so let it be there so why i am facing this problem can anyone tell me why i am facing this issue uh, i think because at the first time we are able, we can't able to face select a selected hero video because we we, have, uh, we are yet not select any anyone from the about for loop in the way so first yes. time as as we are not selecting anyone so selected hero there is no uh, value assigned in selected hero yeah so if i comment out this thing I think application will run. The problem is, we have plotted selected hero. Okay, we have plotted selected hero, and this selected hero is not coming from our TS file unless and until we click in this particular row. So the code you have written over here on select function and selected variable. That's why I put a question mark over here question mark means if it is a blank it will take blank otherwise it will take a hero object okay so at initial level there is no selected hero present so it is giving me undefined selected hero that's why application throwing me an error okay so what i need to do i need to put a if condition over here just a if condition over here into my section so that <coughs> now my code is fine unless and until this selected hero is available this dom is not available because last time what is happened if we are not putting any condition over here this dom is available but dom doesn't get the value unless and until someone clicks on the row okay so let's see how this function actually works so at initial phases it is remain here if i click here then this information is coming i click any row this information is come okay so this is the this is the thing and if you change anything over here since we have bound it in any with ng model you can see that respective row is getting updated okay. you can see this this row is getting updated anyone has any question 
uh, in the ui we change that uh, the fields uh, subrata so it is only affected with this uh, ui only right in at the back end in the coding that is remain same after that this page is refreshed uh, the whatever the default value that will come right yes okay if you refresh that page uh, that default value will automatically appear yes yes anyone asking anything hi subrata mm -hmm. uh, actually my question is like you created that function and you passing a parameter right mm -hmm. so uh, if suppose there is a uh, one variable we have assigned a string value to it and mm -hmm. i would like to send that particular variable as a parameter so can you just show me like how we are going to do uh yeah here we can create one variable mm -hmm. and we would like to pass it as a parameter as a parameter okay so yeah. the variable you are you want to pass mm -hmm. okay yes say for example it will give an error say for example abc is my variable yeah right okay and i've given a bit abc a name uh yeah. anything like you know i've just given a string name mm -hmm. okay because in typescript you have to <clears throat> give either string number object assigned to anything okay okay so okay. you and cannot you can't or, or directly give the or, variable or, yeah. or you can assign any okay uh, okay so as we do in jquery like we first assign a uh, like string for example string a is equals to 0 and then mm -hmm. after we are passing that a to uh, our function right as a parameter mm -hmm. so is it possible like uh, we can utilize the same structure like i can assign any to abc and then so after for example you are passing 0 over here yeah to name then you are passing a hmm. Yeah. A is equal to something. Hmm. A B C. Yeah. So what will happen? Yeah. From, from back end, I want to put that string on uh, my uh, front end. I mean uh, on a TS file, I want mm -hmm. I have a string and that I want to show on button click or on any input. So, uh, no, like I'm not. I'm not getting your question. Uh, I'm saying that uh, we uh, can we like we create one variable right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that variable directly will assign to on select function. No, on select function you are creating from a view page. You have to understand. This is okay. a loop. This is a loop going on. Okay. Hmm. This data is coming from your backend side. Okay. Okay. So in, going forward, you can we will be able to see when we start with services. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to see how backend API will work, how we can pull data. Oh, so yeah. Just okay. Think about that. This data is coming from backend. Mm -hmm. And this is a function we wrote simple function in the jquery jquery same function can be written right there is a for mm. loop yes yes right looking through and you will ally and then you think you have added one click event over there then you are passing this i mean this like an object what is looking through and then you are getting that this object into your uh, main uh, function and then you start working with that object Okay. Yeah. So, uh, for that, can can you just show me one example? Because uh, in Angular, actually, I was not understanding. I tried it, but somehow I was getting errors. So. Yeah. So right now we we are not going into there. Okay. So when we start working with services, mm -hmm. you will be able to see how we collect data from the backend and then how we plot that into yeah. Angular. Mm, okay. But. Uh, by uh, like passing a value to a function, that value we can bring it up, right? On button click or on any input mm -hmm. from function, so we can bring that value, right? For example, I'm just I took a uh, a is equal to one and b is equal to two. I want the uh, addition of it, and that I want to display on button click. 
So uh, that is what I'm asking. Like on in function, how uh, we are going to pass and how like it is going to display on button click. So say for example, in that case, uh, if button click, you, you have a function, right? Button click. Huh. When in Angular, in Angular we need to use two types of forms. One is a template driven form, hmm. another is a reactive forms. So whatever information, whatever information you are giving, चाहे वो टेक्स्ट बॉक्स हो सकता है, रेडियो बटन हो सकता है, कुछ भी हो सकता है, ठीक है? Whatever information you are giving, you just want when you click on the submit button, okay? So what happens that in Angular we have a form submit. So let me give you an example. Then probably you will be able to understand. Yeah. So this is my form. Hmm. First name, last name, email address, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. And there is there is a register. There is a register button. Yeah. So when you click on the register button, what will happen? What is the code? So first they have added certain uh, validation over here. So how how we can do the validation? So those things are here. So to work with reactive forms. This is a simple project. You can do it in your own. I can share this link with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yes. this is this is my app component. Simple. Mm -hmm. They did they didn't create any separate component over here. Okay. This is my app component. Mm -hmm. My app component. I have created one reactive forms. Mm -hmm. So reactive forms requires reactive forms module. So you have to import this thing. Otherwise, it is not going to work. Mm -hmm. Reactive forms module should be part of my mm -hmm. ng module import section mm -hmm. then we have added bootstrap css whatever it is so you can put your bootstrap css link over here in the index.html page mm -hmm. okay in that index.html page you put that bootstrap css you will take mm -hmm. then we have app root that is we mm -hmm. have already defined yeah now we come to the validation section so in angular I'm just diverted because I need to answer your question. In Angular, whenever we have uh, certain things, okay. So for this validation, we can have our own custom validations, and we can use our validator controls we have in the Angular. Okay. So these okay. validator consoles resides in Angular forms. Okay. So you have to import it into your uh, there in this section. Okay. Yeah. Next next step is that in your app component there is a form group and then there is a form builder. So form group basically handles the form builder. Form builder basically handles the form control. So that input box, drop down, text box, radio button, tick box. These are the form control. Okay. Hmm. In constructor, we have to use this form builder to work with your form. So, in these two types of forms, hmm. template driven forms can be controlled from the view pages, but reactive forms can be controlled from the TS. When we have a nested form, I mean forms inside forms, then hmm. we have to use our reactive forms. And in most of our cases, in day to day activity we generally use reactive forms very less i mean this kind of registration or maybe login type of forms where you need to handle uh, i mean both way bindings and other things there we use generally template driven forms so these two forms are separate type of thing now what is there we are initializing this form okay, okay. this is the initialization of the form so 
particular staff basically initialize your entire form at the ts level and you can see that they have put it in the inside mm -hmm. on when we i had a discussion with you people i told you right now you face two things one is a constructor another is a mg on in it so yeah. the main thing you have to deal with these two things unless and until we, i cover the rest of the hooks so when any angular component loads first thing is the constructor then it loads the mg on in it so whatever api call we generally we okay so all api calls come from the mg on in it section Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. So this is the this is the form builder. In this form builder, I have given the full name. This is the way we define the rule. That is validator. We have imported it at the top. So validator dot required username. Username has a certain criteria. Okay. What is the certain criteria when this particular page will be loaded? You can say that this is blank. Why this is blank? Because when this page will be loaded. this page will be blank right this page yeah. doesn't have any initial value if we have any initial value if you put any value over here username or any full name then those value will be reflected into your html form because this reactive forms is generating from the ts file it is not generating from the view but the template driven form is generating from the view not from the ts file so email validation we have these are the Inbuilt validation we have inside our Angular password. So this is the min length and maximum length. So minimum length should be six character, maximum length will be twenty character. Password over there, and we can you can set your uh, password custom rule also, so that this confirm password will be okay. same to that password. Okay, so this accept terms. accept terms is a separate thing accept terms probably i think in ui there will be a check box i think yes this is a check box this is accept okay. Hmm, okay okay yeah so so these are the rule when you click on the <laughs> button whenever i put required and certain criteria those information should be filled at the ui level then only you can submit the button now think about you are submitting the button Okay. okay so when you are actually submitting the button this is the initialization of the form in ng on in it you have just initialized this mm -hmm. particular form i am giving this link in the chat so that everyone will be able to see this thing okay <clears throat> now what happens when you on it so so the so i mean your form get there is a on submit method okay yeah yeah this on submit method where it is so let's go into our html this is our html okay, ah, okay. you can see that i have written here they have written ng submit ng submit is a form submit method or event that angular provides Okay. it is not like a button click event button click event will be there but this this is a submit button if you go into there at the bottom part if you mm -hmm. see that it is type is submit so you can understand the difference between a submit button and type button right uh yeah so when type is when the text right type is the button that doesn't re require any kind of forms or anything whatever html type uh, convention you have a type button requires a click event right to fire but when type submit is there that means when you click on this button the form will get it will be submitted okay okay so there are two buttons one is the type submit and then another is a button that is a reset button so it will clear out the form okay now okay now go back to your function so there is a submit submit but okay. submit function on, on submit function is there okay yes so this on submit function will fire when you filled up the form okay now okay. in Ang angular we have couple of stages we have couple of stages when we are dealing with forms okay there is a pristine one stage there is a valid one stage there is a invalid one stage angular gives you a flexibility suppose you 
touch the form i mean you touch any input button uh, sorry input text or drop down whenever you touch anything inside the form or clicking anywhere that time forms get dirty so angular has that a event to check whether user has clicked in the form or not sometimes a requirement comes ki bhai kisi ne uh, form pe whatever information he updated or not based on that you need to trigger an alert okay so how you rec uh, i mean recognize whether you user has touched anything or probably this is not an artificial intelligence right so once ever you click on any text box this form gets dirty that means whenever you click on the submit button okay you have to show that message whether you need to update certain information or not i am talking about the edit section i am not talking about the add section the edit page comes and if user doesn't touch anything just click on the edit button then these forms gets opened with the certain data and user didn't touch anything and then click on the cancel so if that is there then if you click on the cancel then you can redirect user back to the listing page but if user click on any text boxes or drop down that means forms get dirty that time if user click on the cancel you have to show a certain pop up whether user needs to save this information or not if he says yes then you have to trigger the submit button functionality otherwise if user clicks no then you can redirect user back to the listing page so uh, subrata basically that means uh, if the user is clicking that means if he is performing any sort of action on those text fields like you just mentioned it gets dirty so for that we need to make a validation that if that person has done something even if it is a click then say no form forms has that event angular yeah. form has that event okay there okay. is a pristine there is a dirty okay there is a invalid there is a valid okay this form dot invalid Oh, so okay. we don't have to do anything specifically we just have to yeah. put these you have to, you have to implement those things okay implement these things yeah you have to use those things okay so you can you can practice it in your end okay because if i went to train everything it will be difficult but whenever you have uh, this is a confirm password rules they have created okay this is a uh, i think there is a utility function is there where this through this function they are checking that password and confirm password are same or not same or not. so this is this is an example where you are actually creating a custom function and invoking that function into your component and applying it into your rule custom rule okay so 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 this is an example where you will get how to handle a login or registration form registration form might have couple of bigger fields login form has two fields okay so if you practice it in your end you will be able to understand the form related stuffs in the angular and you can you can google it with a example of a template driven form and example of a reactive form then you also get that information okay okay now go back to again into my example so whatever click event we have added we have added in the things now style that selected hero okay so they want to add a class level uh, validation over here in the ai okay so whenever anyone click on any row that row should be highlighted so here it is how we need css i think selected hero class is already i think they have added so if i click on here so this is this will be get highlighted and this is the example of a class attribute So, if you want to highlight any row, 
then angular has this class top selected and where you can compare that your hero and the selected hero is same based on that this class get activated into that particular row so this is the my final code so from here you will get everything so whatever we have covered in the tour of heroes application display a list of heroes with a detail view the user can select a hero and see that hero's details we use ng for to display a leaf we use ng if to conditionally include or exclude a block of html and you can toggle a css class by using class bind so that that example i have shown you that that is a class bind Uh, one, I just have one doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. If instead of class, if I would like to apply on a particular ID, then uh, uh, we'll write instead of class, we'll put a ID. If you do not push this class, then uh, from the CSS side, you won't be there, right? So if you go into that particular CSS, yeah, and if you start searching this selected. So these heroes li selected they have class this they have created this class so have used this class in the condition so if you put on the id you can do that but in that case your class won't be applied so you have to modify your css accordingly yeah okay but if i if i've created id and i would like to apply that particular id so i just have to put uh, in a code where you have mentioned class i'll put id right then it would work like i'm just asking how it would work so here you have to create that class right so ultimately from this class this class dot selected i am taking the classes from here right css classes the selected class is there yeah, yeah. so you have to work on the id perspective so you have to put in the id perspective class over here oh, then okay only, okay you say then, only, then oh. only class dot id will work oh okay okay Okay. So, in my next example, so before we move into the next example, what I want to tell you that uh, right now, whatever we have put over here, it is in the same page. Okay. Just a minute. sorry so whatever right now we have written we have written it in the same page okay we have only you know component block and then we have list page and as well as in the detail page now what i want to do in our practical example we generally segregate this section in a separate component because this is a detailing section okay so now we are going to create a new component here so i will run this command
yes anyone has any question yeah so that no. hi hi so yes yes tell me uh yeah like in in line number 3 uh so you write like that class dot selected equal to hero uh equal to selected hero right so uh so generally uh, we are comparing here direct object right if mm -hmm. if, if we select a particular uh, particular uh, line so it will show as a selected in the listing right mm -hmm. So generally, generally we uh, apply the check uh, on particular like ID or name, but here yes. I see uh, like we are comparing uh, uh, directly object because yes. hero is a like particular object, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so is it is not possible to uh, compare with like direct ID or uh, yes, name yes, and... yes, 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 yes. Yeah, this because person. like. Yeah, because in like in a particular object, uh, maybe there are many fields, right? Like many, mm -hmm. anything. Like like mm -hmm. suppose uh, <coughs> suppose we have ten to twenty fields, so it mm -hmm. will uh, it will compare all, so it will be make some uh, like lengthy things. So uh, how we can do like for particular things? Can you please show? Yeah, here you can put hero dot id, and here you can put selected hero dot id. That is the simple thing. Okay, okay. Okay. It Whenever you right? practice, you you try this. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so we have created one <clears throat> hero details component over here. Okay. Now, I will take this code and put it into the hero details component dot html file.
So let me explain what I have done. So <clears throat> this is simple thing, but this is a new thing, right? I have created a separate component and I have included this component inside another component. Earlier, this entire part was in the same page. Now what I have done, I have created a separate component from this because I can develop an independent functionality for this entire, okay. So I have taken this entire detailing part into a separate component and I am passing, this is the property binding. This is what you have seen, this is a class binding and this is a property binding and this component is a child component of heroes component so there is a parent child relationship happening in angular so transfer data from parent to child because your parent has hero right and you need to transfer this hero value to this particular child component how you can do that you can assign your uh, hero into your selected hero just means yeah hello mm -hmm. सॉरी ओके तो हम लोगों ने क्या किया कि वट वी हैव डन कि वी हैव दिस इज ए चाइल्ड कॉम्पन राइट चाइल्ड कंपोनेंट ऑफ हीरो कंपोनेंट हीरो डिटेल जो है एक चाइल्ड कंपोनेंट है और पेरेंट कंपोनेंट से हम चाइल्ड कंपोनेंट पे डेटा भेज रहे हैं ठीक है वो डेटा जब हम लोग भेजते हैं तो जो चाइल्ड होता है उसको एट द रेट इनपुट करके वो डेटा रिसीव करना पड़ता है ठीक है देर आर टू डेकोरेटर अवेलेबल फॉर पेरेंट चाइल्ड कम्युनिकेशन वन इज द इनपुट एट द रेट इनपुट एंड एन अदर वन विल बी द एट द रेट आउट तो इनपुट से आपको क्या होता है ऊपर से डेटा नीचे आता है और आउटपुट से क्या होगा नीचे से डेटा ऊपर जाएगा ठीक है तो जब चाइल्ड से आपको कुछ इंफॉर्मेशन ऊपर में भेजना है पेरेंट को तो आपको आउटपुट ऑपरेटर यूज करने पाएगी ठीक है तो यहाँ पे यही चीज है कि इनपुट ऑपरेटर से हम लोगों ने इसको लिया यहाँ से हीरो प्रॉपर्टी को हम लोगों ने ऐसे ये कन्वेंशन है ठीक है उसको असाइन किया उसकी वैल्यू हम सिलेक्टेड हीरो पे दे रहे हैं जब सिलेक्टेड हीरो ट्रिगर होगा और इसको हम एज एन इनपुट ले रहे हैं और ये जो हीरो है यही हीरो बेसिकली यहाँ पे डिस्प्ले हो रहा है ठीक है सिंस वी हैव ए मॉडल ड्रिवेन फॉर्म हियर 
तो हम लोग जब यहाँ पे कुछ भी चेंज करते हैं वट एवर विच इंफॉर्मेशन वी आर चेंजिंग ओवर हियर दैट इज गेटिंग अपडेटेड ओवर हियर so this is the simplest way because ng model has this power of two way binding if you don't use ng model then you have to if you need that if certain information getting updated over here and same information should update over here then you have to use the output at the rate output decorator and i think that will be uh, output decorator and then you have to use event emitter okay तो आप लोग इसको एक बार ट्राई कर सकते हो अपने इन पे एक छोटा सा पीओसी समझ के क्योंकि ये एग्जांपल मैंने यहाँ पे बनाया है आप एनजी मॉडल हटा के इसको एज एन आउटपुट डेकोरेटर के साथ भेज सकते हो ठीक है कि आउटपुट डेकोरेटर के साथ यहाँ पे आप करके देख सकते हो कि आउटपुट डेकोरेटर कैसे काम करेगा तो आप चाइल्ड से जो डेटा भेजोगे वो तो आपको पेरेंट पे रिसीव होगा क्योंकि एनजी मॉडल क्या करेगा एनजी मॉडल वो सिंपल काम कर देता है ठीक है तो आप इसको एक बार ट्राई कर सकते हो आउटपुट डेकोरेटर के साथ एज एन अपीज ठीक है ठीक है तो वी हैव टू या वी हैव टू स्टॉप हियर टुडे एनीवन हैज एनी क्वेश्चन Yes, sir. I have one question. That is, mm -hmm. in this child component, we have to define the. I mean, we have to call the model itself in this file, correct? I mean, the line number one, we are again calling the model. Yeah, because exactly. model why why we are calling because we need to validate our data. Okay, that's why we are using model. It is actually helpful for optimizing memory of Angular application. The less you use any because any produces lot of garbage value in the memory. Angular yeah, has a rich memory, so if you are using any. so angular try to find out what kind of because typescript has a normal tendency ki every data should be type definition so if you give that type definition string number object it is always easy for typescript to understand and optimize the memory otherwise you can sometimes in our real life scenario we have to use any because uh, it will be very hard to maintain all kinds of model okay but the less you use any the your memory and application will be more faster yeah, that's true yeah. so okay then i think we have done today uh if you do not have any question then i can stop presenting my screen and then close this call i have to brother uh yes i have question so uh, like uh, while we using at the rate output mm -hmm. like uh, to send the data from uh, child to parents right mm -hmm. so uh, where we write the at the rate output in the parent uh, component or child component it should be child component right yeah like like uh, like show the code no just just ja, i i'll i'll ask that you should prefer i will prefer that you should go into that google mm -hmm. and try to find out an input and output example okay yes yes and then implement that example mm -hmm. into this application removing that ng model stuff okay yeah. okay so you can you can do it it yes. will help you to i mean everything cannot be trained and i mean exemplified in the application okay so certain mm -hmm. things we have to do it in your our hand to get our hand dirty i will definitely tell you point by point that what we are covering and what you can you have to do it in your own and if you need any help you can tell me i will definitely share links of examples there are a lot of examples if you find input output example with angular uh, there you will get lot of example with small small application okay you can come and get your hands dirty okay so we use output at the rate output decorator and event emitter okay oops okay i will try okay anyone has any else, else any question komal komal do you have any question uh, actually i have um, yes. i'm actually still uh, like i just wanted to know uh, if 
you know suppose a function is there and uh, i have to pass as a parameter see uh, that one which we have passed as a hero you know colon that was like a, uh, an object and uh, you know in that format we have sent but suppose the a, uh, data is coming in array format or the data we are bringing in a json format so uh, if i would like to take it through the function i mean uh, you know to display in a table so uh, how it would be you know uh, like it would work that that i was wondering actually so, so in in your case whenever you have certain array or something hmm. it will be there in the ts file okay yeah so in from that ts file you need to send that data uh, to that view page or maybe you already uh, playing with that array or object okay so you can i have sent here an object you can send an array you can send an variable uh, whatever you use i mean you can you can okay. you can send a json a json is nothing but an object right mm -hmm, yeah right so you can send it Okay. 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 Fine. Okay. okay. Then I think, guys, we have to close this call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.